Um, John Trickett, welcome. Thank Hello you very there. much indeed for coming to join us this week. Um, the cooperation between Labour and the Conservative parties on Brexit, all sorts of stuff coming out of Cabinet yesterday, that that could be about to intensify. The offer to Labour could be expanded, uh, become a bit more generous. And I'm just wondering with what spirit you greet that, how plausible it seems that it could actually go the whole distance mm. and that Labour MPs could help make Brexit happen for Theresa May. Well, I don't see it uh, quite like that. I see as if Brexit does happen and uh, those were the instructions from the people uh, that it will be uh, Brexit which works for the whole country and not simply for Mrs May. And indeed, uh, clearly Mrs May's idea of what Brexit looks like simply doesn't cut anything at all for the wider population, even for the Conservative Party, even for her own cabinet, they don't feel very comfortable with her ideas. So look, I mean, for the moment where these conversations are going on, I've had a part of it uh, earlier on, and we stand ready to continue talking, we are doing. It's going to some really quite detailed technical areas now, and we have to assume that they want to find a deal. As you say, there are various noises off. Sometimes I think it might feel as though we're speaking to the Prime Minister and perhaps a third of the British government. The other two thirds have got the fingers behind the back cross, hoping it might not happen. Maybe, I don't know. I don't and know. maybe there's a similar situation on your own benches, even if you might disagree about the fractions. Well, uh, I think, uh, look, our policy is pretty clear, which is that we said we accepted the results of the referendum. However, we wanted to deliver it in a certain way, as you know, and thereby hands quite a story. And quite a few of your colleagues in Parliament had their fingers crossed behind their back, hoping that didn't happen, didn't they? Well, there are different points of view in the population as a whole, so it's not surprising that within all the parties there are different nuances. Look, we commit ourselves, both in our manifesto and in our conference, to accept the decision of the British people, but we want to interpret it in a way which we believe can be unifying, because clearly in almost half the country voted to remain, half the country, the majority, voted to leave. So we think respect the result, but try to find a way which brings people together. That's what we're trying to do. And I suppose what I'm wondering about is, even if Jeremy Corbyn and your team were able to sign on the dotted line of a rejigged Brexit deal, which satisfied the top team, how many of your MPs could you actually deliver? Because I've, I've spoken to people on both sides of the House who say, well, Theresa May won't be able to bring everyone with her, because the moment she mm. reaches across to you, she loses yeah. quite a lot of people on her own side. Yeah. But you won't necessarily be able to. And the figure I hear being touted around is, well, maybe about 160 either side would join the respective leader for that journey. I think I would expect we would get more than that. We will. There will be some fracturing. There already has been in all the parties. It's pointless denying that. You might have more than them. Uh, I think we would have more than them if they were to get 160. I think you might be looking to see 160 Tories going through this. But look, I mean, they're in a corner. It's, How would in, that go down with the, the party? It won't go down very well with the Tory party. How would it go down with your party? Well, it depends on any deal. We're not going to sign up to any damn thing. We want a deal which protects jobs, which protects the environment. You know, all the stuff that we've said many, many times. And we'll continue to fight for that. We want one that doesn't uh, damage the situation in Ireland. You know what we're after. And it should be a deal that many people who voted for Remain, but who are decent, honest people, and accept that they were in a minority, can say, well, actually, that feels like... We are not turning backs on Europe or on the rest of the world. We're not xenophobes. We don't hate foreigners, uh, and so on and so forth. And I think let's see where we get to. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge. I don't know whether the Tories are serious or not in dis in negotiating. It may be she's decided that she doesn't want to necessarily deliver it with the majority of her own party, but she wants to retire on the basis she's delivered a form of Brexit. I don't know what's in her mind, but we are taking these conversations seriously. I suppose uh, what some Remainers in the party <coughs> will be feeling is this is just too much because although you w you would argue that you would have brought things, if we got to this place, sure. you would have brought Brexit to a place that was uh, more conforming to Labour's uh, manifesto commitments sure. and its principles, mm -hmm. to them it's not just about environmental protections, Labour protections, no. it goes to the heart of 
some people's Labour identity. I'm going to come to other Labour people's uh, identity, sure. many people sure. in your own constituency, yeah. but to, to some of those people, it goes to the heart of their identity, the internationalism and everything that sure. they believe in. Sure. Is your message going to be to them further down the line, just get over it? No, I think we want to carry them with us. We want to explain how we will build a, hopefully, a Labour government, if we can manage to get there, which is internationalist. We know we're European. We accept we're part of the European family, uh, part of the European culture. When the uh, that horrible fire in Paris took place, uh, I think everybody's heart was tugged, and we, we knew it was part of the cultural heritage the, of all of us. Whether we remain as or not, we are internationalists, and we want to build that kind of thing. But look, here's the thing: is that Labour is also a party we believe of democracy above all. And I think the central, if that is one of our central precepts, the idea that you can dismiss a, let's say, half or more than half of the population who voted in a certain way doesn't accord well with Labour's central core values. Uh, but look, let's see where we get to. If a deal well, is it's arrived like at. get over it a bit, isn't it? And you know, know well, get, get used to it. Get, get, come. Uh, look, there are things that. Dismantle uh, uh, some of your objections. No, uh, move well, on. Move there, on. Uh, yeah, there are things which all of us in politics would prefer were in one way or the other but in the end of the day we are part of a political process it does involve compromise on one side or the other and uh, for example on the question of the referendum there are some people very strongly for it some strongly against it and in the end one side will have more numbers than the other and I think you know we have to find a way we call each other comrades of being comradely of being what we used to call fraternal that's a sexist phrase nowadays and um, we need to carry ourselves forward because the big prize is uh, trying to reunify the country on a new basis, getting ready for a Labour government. But a lot of your colleagues don't sound rem remotely in that place. You might think of them perhaps as your own version of the ERG, the Tory hardliners, but the pro-referendum forces in your party haven't made that journey that you're talking about. Well, there's more conversations to be had, and there are always more conversations to be had. Look, I think we're in... Uh, the country's in a difficult position. Uh, there is a sense of crisis in the country, and it's leading to uh, anxiety and even anger. We all know that, on one side or the other. Somebody somewhere has to cut through the divisions which the Tories have created, in my view they've created, and so we're going to try to reunify. That's our central message. We're trying to find a way of dealing with this problem, or which is also an opportunity after all, uh, which reunifies the country. And I hope that all Labour MPs will respond to that and members in due course. You were at the National Executive Committee meeting yeah. yesterday, yeah. five hours of your life, you're not getting back. Uh, probably more than five hours, actually. But, uh, Shadow cabinet yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And the compromise position that Labour yeah. has come up with on a, a referendum was pretty much stuck to, not much changed. Not exactly. I think you have to look at the resolution which went through the conference, which said that if we don't get an election, if we don't get a deal that were a Tory, if we have a Tory deal, then a number of options in the plural were available, include the possibility of campaigning for um, a referendum, a second referendum. You know that. We've all learned it in <laughs> parrot fashion. What the resolution uh, which went through the NEC yesterday is saying, by the way, we're, we're waiting to see exactly the wording when it comes out next week, but I think we know roughly... In the European elections manifesto. Yeah, the, in the manifesto, it's going to be announced shortly, is we're heading towards saying that the party will back the option of a referendum. So it, we are narrowing down the range of options which are available and that seems but to be a step towards... in circumstances you hope remain remote? Well, we've no idea what's going to happen. I don't know what's in Mrs May mind. I don't know if she always knows from day to day. I mean, maybe she does. I think we can't predict so the future. So you gave them a little bit of... a few crumbs, crumbs of comfort. I think we uh, moved, uh, we moved uh, towards saying, uh, as you would expect us to, because we're getting close to the cliff edge again, 
uh, to the possibility that there will be a second referendum. That seems to me to be logical. It's built into both our manifesto from the last election, 2017, and the conference resolution as well. But look, we still want to see whether we can come to an arrangement uh, which finds a way forward, or if not, a general election. That's our preferred choice. And that brings us back to where we started, the idea of a, a, an agreement between the Labour and Conservative front benches on a type of Brexit. That wouldn't, If that worked, if that compromise were to be found, mm -hmm we would not be talking about a second referendum. Well, it, my feeling is, if we will get to a point where there was a Labour Brexit, and remember that it's got to be, it's very carefully constructed, and it involves quite a lot of different, different uh, streams of work, then I think the House of Commons could probably say we've delivered on the referendum, and we've delivered a unifying position. Um, it's very difficult to see how we're going to get there in the present Parliament, because the Commons is log jammed, but equally it's very difficult, in fact it's very difficult to see how you can get a referendum in the, pre the present House of Commons either. And so we think in the end, that is why we're calling for a general election. Obviously it's in our party's interest to have a general election if we can win it, but, but there's a logic to our position which is the current House of Commons is log jammed, unable to make decisions and therefore, look, I can't see them either agreeing any form of Brexit as the present is, or any form of Remain, or any form of blooming a uh, referendum either because th we've tried all these things already but look let's see where we get to in the coming days and weeks how has labor's stance on brexit been perceived in your constituency maybe we should start actually by telling me a bit about how your constituency voted <coughs> yep. in the referendum yeah. and and how, how how it's made up <coughs> well my constituency uh, is made up of 23 basically English villages in the heart of Yorkshire, uh, which as we know is the heart of England, uh, God's own county. It's, uh, they were mining villages. Every one of them had a pit or the people worked at the pit. Obviously that closed a long time ago, those, those mines. And uh, it split roughly 70-30 in favour of Brexit. I always thought that it probably would, frankly. And uh, people felt that uh, the way in which the country has treated those villages in general terms has been unjust and unfair and I agree with them and I think they took the opportunity of the referendum to say hang on a minute we don't like how this country is going you've asked us a question do you want things to continue in the same old way and we said no and that I think uh, is very important on the other hand 30% voted for for remain I have to watch both I have to watch both the 70% your voters uh, the remainers are uh, my voters so are quite a number of the uh, Brexiteers as well and I think it's that really uh, watching both sides listening to the arguments in the streets in the pubs and at work and trying to say look we've got to find a way of getting together actually when you say let's find a way of overcoming the differences on this most people will say oh yeah you're right but when you go back for the weekend and and they give you a little report back on how they think Brexit is going. They do give a report Parliament back. Yes, it can be heated. Handling the yeah, whole thing. And yeah. maybe even how Labour is handling yeah. it. What do you hear? Uh, we hear all kinds of noises, as you'd expect, 75,000 people. Give me some uh, of the broadcastable ones. Well, the more broadcastable ones are from uh, anger and rage about the... The general situation in the country, the logjam, why can't you get a decision and get it implemented? Uh, some people saying, uh, let's just get out of here. Other people saying we want to remain. The vast majority of people talking actually about bad experiences with little Johnny at school or the NHS and remember Brexit, though we talk about it endlessly down here, it is not the top of anybody's mind apart from people very hard on one side or the other. Most people, for example, buses. I represent 23 villages. The bus services are being cut to the bone. I meet people all the time. A, a woman working in one village but lives in another. There's no bus service when she has to go to work. She has to walk all the way to work and back. And we've announced the other day we'll introduce uh, better bus services. How do they Those things matter. How do they perceive... Labour as a party that's trying to stop Brexit happening or is helping it happen? Uh, I hope they see it as Labour trying to find a, uh, a way out of this. Uh, hope uh, I hope that that's how they see it. Do, do they uh, it's impossible. I uh, get, uh, get all kinds of views. Uh, look, we've reviewed 
the we review as you'd expect all the correspondence we get those people who were emeritus professors in Newcastle University who occasionally write to me probably get further down the list than people who live around the corner uh, as you'd expect and uh, we are getting lots and lots of letters from those kind of people all over the country Bristol Oxford Cambridge they're all wonderful people who want us to remain when you separate out the ones who live in the where I live in the, where I represent it's actually a probably 50-50 split between Remainers and Leavers. Some of them very angry, some of them saying, keep at it, John, we know that you're doing the right thing, we know you... Remember, I've been there for 23 years, they know me. And some of them kind of furious about the whole situation. It's a mixed bag. Now look, we then write back to them and explain what it is we're trying to achieve. So, I don't know, we've had 2,000, I think, uh, items of correspondence from my constituency. Uh, the other day, I think we used to send 600 and odd letters explaining what my position is, both to Remainers and to leave us the same letter. I think we got 30 or so responses, uh, or 60, I think it was, to be fair, 30 each side. We're trying to speak to each one of those personally. Um, one of the other things that you do, you wear, you've always worn quite a few hats uh, in, sure. in different front bench roles, is trying to prepare <coughs> Labour yeah. for government. Yeah. And you talked about a general election uh, that you hope happens yeah. soon, maybe even this autumn perhaps. Yeah. Uh, is that your central, just as a matter of interest, is that your central guess at the moment that we could I, be looking at one in October? I think or? you can speculate what's going to happen. I think I think it looks like a nailed on certainty that she'll be off Mrs May probably in the foreseeable future. That the summer will probably be preoccupied with a Europe, uh, with a sorry, with a, a, a Tory uh, leadership contest. Um, Brexit somehow will not take front foot, other than within the Tory party as they fight for predominance. Whoever wins the leadership of the Tory party will have been unelected. The third one in a row, it actually <laughs> hasn't had a proper electoral mandate. I mean, they will come back to the House of Commons in the same situation we are now, where it's log jammed. And I therefore think the poly, the new Prime Minister will probably try to break through the long jam on Brexit, be unable to do so maybe, and then we'll call on the election. That's my guess, but who knows? And if Labour were to win that general election, if it were to happen, sure. and Brexit hadn't yet happened... Good question. I knew you were going to ask me that. I mean, look, when I think about Brexit, I, clearly I'm interested in what's happening in Parliament on a day-to-day. But I also want to think, and I want us all to think as a country, is what the underlying factors which produce such a divided country and how we can we begin to reunify. Now, I've got a couple of figures for your listeners, and I hope they'll bear with me because they're very interesting. We had a look at the number of people in Richmond Park constituency in London, which is a Tory seat, Lib Lib marginal. There are 62,700 people in high-quality jobs managerial, professional, the top quality jobs in uh, that seat. In my seat there are 11,700, so there's a fifth, less than a fifth of the number of jobs of that quality there. And so it won't surprise you when I, then we looked at the number of people with high level qualifications, uh, more or less degree level. There are 67,000 voters out of 75,000 in Richmond Park who've got degrees, 67,000. My constituency, there's 13,000. And the point is, young people entering the labour market in my constituency, the high quality jobs are not there. And if they want to take a degree, and we want them to do, then they get a degree, they, they go somewhere else. And so you've got a country, just by illustrating those two differences, which shows you how divided our country is and how those people who voted for Remain with high quality jobs and high quality degrees need to show a little bit of patience and understanding about the community that I represent and the young people there who look, they've got shiny eyes, bright, excited, looking towards a better future. And with the jobs simply aren't there of a reasonable quality. So what they'll say to me is crap jobs, why should I bother going off to university and end up with 50,000 debt around my neck? So, in answer to your question, what are we preparing for in, what in government? We, we want to come to office and Brexit yeah. hasn't happened. We will try to deal with the underlying causes of Brexit, the economic, social and political problems, the obstacles which uh, take place. Then we will see where we are uh, in terms of our manifesto, 
we do not agree our manifesto even with somebody as wonderful as you Gary we agree through our process so let's see where we are in relation to our manifesto so what are you not ruling out there? it sounds like you're not ruling out anything I think we need to see what happens when we get uh, there can you tell me when the election will be and can you tell me whether we'll have brexited or not and then I'll be able to give you a clearer answer but well, what I, are the uh, factors weighing up there whether public opinion has shifted for instance towards uh, Remain or strongly to further towards Brexit or what's what, what, what what would be weighing in your mind? Uh, what would weigh in my mind is a deeply divided country where politics is broken, where the social structures are not working, where the economy is simply not uh, active uh, in a constituencies right across the north of England. Uh, remember, 45 out of 55 seats in Yorkshire voted to leave. We've got to understand why that should be. And then... Uh, it doesn't sound to like you rule out the idea that Brexit might not happen no, uh, under a Labour government. No, I'm not going to predict where we're going to be. I know you're pushing me. I'm not going to predict where we're going to be. However, my own view is we have an outstanding decision taken by the British people, a significant majority, but with an equally significant, not quite equal, but an, a, a very large part of the population, 48%, voted for uh, remaining. We've got to find a way of trying to bridge the differences between us. My own view, for what it's worth, speaking personally, but not speaking on behalf of the party now, is we have to honour that decision. But look, if the manifesto says something different, then clearly that will be a new mandate, but I don't suppose it will. And you suspect if you dropped the commitment to Brexit, seats like yours would rise up in anger and you'd, Labour would feel the pain? Uh, speaking again for me, I represent, I want to be the spokesperson for my constituency. I want to speak up for people who I've described young people with very little prospects. They want to see big radical change. And many people in my area have come to the conclusion that Europe hasn't helped them at all. They don't feel plugged into the global economy. We've got to offer jobs, housing, and all those kind of things. Now, in that process, uh, I have to be able to look people in the eye and say, I intend personally to see whether we can honour the decision you originally took. But obviously, the longer it goes beyond the referendum, you know, older people are dying, younger people never voted. We know there's all sorts of arguments out How there. How good is that mandate good for? Um, I'm not going to answer that question. That's like how long is a piece of string? But, look but it at sounds it. like it has a de depreciation. Uh, well, there is a, uh, well, some people are making that case, and we listen to them. But I look, I'm in my constituency every week, and I live there. I live in my constituency. I regard coming to London as a part-time, you know, operation where I, but although I spend most of my life here, and uh, I need to be able to look people in the eye and and say I, I want to honour the decision which we've taken. The thing is, let's get on with it. Why don't Mrs May put all of these uh, red lines aside, roll up her sleeves, and say we're going to resolve this quickly in a non-dogmatic, pragmatic way? And that's where I think we need to get. When I hear your voice speaking yep. about the European Union, yep. and you were someone who actually fought against membership way back in 1975... Yeah, yeah, I'm an old man, I'm an old man. OK, don't, don't tell me, I'm an old man, but... Am I hearing a voice closer to Jeremy Corbyn's um, than maybe some in the Labour I Party? Think he, his instincts? Uh, I don't know what he... I don't, I don't know how he voted in seventy five. I imagine he probably voted against the common market, I as it he was then. He probably did, and I did. I was, a, I was an organiser for it. Look, but he, we, you come from the same place. His I instincts come, are the same as yours. Uh, maybe, ones. maybe. I uh, haven't spoken to him about this, but let's, look, before the yeah, before on. the referendum, <laughs> yeah, but, but I haven't. I, I, I think haven't, Brexit uh, has probably come. Yeah, up. it has from time to time, but haven't. Sort of, we're dealing with a complex political situation here. Here's the thing: before the referendum, I felt that Labour had to uh, make sure that the argument for rem for remain but reform was heard clearly. And somebody leaked, and I dropped a letter to Jeremy to say that. And somebody, somebody leaked that, so everybody knows what my view is. But I voted for Remain, uh, and I spoke to Jeremy about it. He persuaded me that Remain was the right thing, but to reform. Who persuaded him? Uh, but, well, maybe he came to his own view. It's quite possible. And uh, that's all a matter of historical record. I'm not going to deny something which is, which is untrue. But I felt as if more needed to be said to persuade people who remain inclined that actually we have a massive reform agenda for the European Union. And so some of the worries you have about it, we will make sure if we get into government, we'll change. So I think that's, we all develop. Look, there are thousands, in fact, there are hundreds of thousands of jobs in Yorkshire, depending on, 
uh, having an active economic relationship with the European Union. You can't change that. And we don't want to lose those jobs. So we have to move with the times, and that's what we've all done. Um, quick last question, because we're running out sure. of time. Um, you're one of the very, very small number of MPs in this House of Commons with a background in manual labour. Yeah, yeah. And when you go back to a constituency or visit other constituencies, how much do you think that disconnect voices, people with experiences that aren't the same as life lived yep. out there, how, stro how, how much of a part of the mm. disconnect with mm. politics is that? Well, look, I, not, you touch on one of my strongest uh, sort of political imperatives in a way. I mean, look, uh, I was once told I would be the last person from my background ever to be a member of the Labour cabinet or shadow cabinet. Plumber, you left school I, I was 15. a building worker, yeah. I was expelled from school, actually, uh, but went on to take uh, degrees later. But um, I think that's a mistake. I think that the party needs to, in fact, politics needs to uh, represent the whole of the society. It's not so long ago, by the way, that you your colleague John Snow was saying quite openly that he, lots of the media live in quite a small bubble and um, they didn't call the general election 2017, they didn't call Grenfell right, they didn't see them at the referendum the, going way, the way it did. I saw all of those things because I think I am connected to the community in the way that uh, not everybody is possibly. And we need more of it. We do need more of it. That is a good, good point of view and I agree with you there, Gary.